Episode 2 of our Crystal Palace career mode and the January transfer window is underway. Big decisions are about to happen soon, like whether star player Wilfred Zaha will sign a new contract with his current one expiring at season's end. My objective for this winter transfer window is to make a marquee signing in the midfield. The only reason that we're mid-table right now is due to Zaha's individual performances. I want a new arrival to make up for more of our assist numbers. But we need to be smart about scouting players because we used most of our transfer budget in the last episode when we brought back Aaron Juan Basaka to the club. I have come up with a three player shortlist based off of your transfer suggestions and we'll begin with a great storyline transfer in Connor Gallagher. The Chelsea Prospects loan spell at Palace was wildly successful, contributing eight goals and three assists from the midfield. Unfortunately, he will not be available for a transfer as he is out on loan at Hatafe in this save. Staying in the Premier League with option two, and that is Alex Oxlade-Chamberlain, still able to put in class performances on his day. There is a risk of injury, and that's my main concern. Liga A has been one of Vieira's go-to leagues to sign players from, and as far as midfielders that have slipped under the radar of big clubs, Enzo Lefe is a solid all-around player. While Lorient are struggling in this save, he's helped lead them near the top of the Liga 1 standings in real life. Just as we're about to kick off a new competition in the FA Cup with a fixture against Leeds United, absolute chaos is going to unfold. Lazio are willing to pay Mateta's 16.8 million release clause. And while he has the second most goals scored for the club this season, three of those came in a single Carabao Cup fixture. I was 50-50 on letting him go because I do think he's a good player, but the extra funds for this transfer window were too much for me to pass up on. That doesn't mean we need to add more squad depth at the striker position, and I'll be discussing our options later. It's fair to say the other clubs were starting to take notice of these deals as Milan were reportedly interested in Premier League top assist player Wilfred Zaha. But as we jump ahead later in the January transfer window, I want to show you each of these fixtures. Zaha was literally the only player scoring goals. What better way to show we mean business at Crystal Palace than trying to sign a star player to accompany Zaha in Hussein Awa. The Leon player is well acquainted with the Kuruma community, peaking with 90 potential in FIFA 19. Linked with a few Premier League clubs in the last transfer window, including the likes of Arsenal, Nottingham Force, and of course, Crystal Palace. It's time to make the transfer finally happen. Once again, this transfer grade undervalues how good of a deal I think this actually was. Awar literally fits what we're looking for perfectly, and the squad is looking considerably more competitive. As far as formation goes, this is what I'm thinking. Still utilizing the five in the back with our defense, Awar will play the more attacking-minded center mid role, allowing him to bring the ball to our attack, and Zaha, of course, being our source for goals. It's a good chance for us to test these tactics in our fourth round FA Cup fixture against Millwall, and Awar certainly made the difference. A hat trick! in his Palace debut. And with speculation still brewing, it's time to finally make a decision regarding Zaha. Had we received offers or even a pre-contract deal from a Premier League club, I might have considered otherwise, but for the time being, and especially with a crucial match against Arsenal, coming up. We will finalize these transfer talks, giving Zaha a crucial squad role and another two years here at Crystal Palace. Along with that, we've got three other contract extensions. Jeffrey Schlupp, our rotational midfielder. Joel Ward will be declining in his overall, but we need that squad depth at center back. Finally, Jordan Ayew probably has one more solid season ahead as a rotational right winger. But this is an important homecoming for Patrick Vieira. Arsenal underperforming this season and a chance for us to make a statement against the Gunners. No notable highlights in the first 30 minutes of this one, but Arsenal with the high press will win back possession, and it's Martin Odegaard with the long shot effort. Johnson equal to it though, and I figured for the second half of the season, we'll rotate our keepers and see who will be our number one for the remainder of the year, but it was really only a matter of time before we could withstand this Arsenal pressure, just unable to clear the ball out of the box, and the Gunners will take the 1-0 lead 54 minutes in. It's going to be difficult for us to get back into this match, but if we will, it'll need to be an attacking change. And Edward has been one of our goal scorers so far this year, has scored on some clutch occasions, some great distribution from Awar to find Zaha out wide. He spots out the one from Edward, and from this sort of position, I think it's a 50-50 chance whether he can find the back of the net. Ramsdale able to get enough of it, to stop from going in and off of the corner kick. It's another solid save from Ramsdale. It really seemed like we were in this match and just about to make things level, but it only takes a moment for Arsenal to double their lead. 76 minutes into the fixture, and it's Zinchenko pushing up from his left back position 
gives Arsenal the 2-0 advantage, and that pretty much sealed things from here on out. We, of course, had to go constant pressure at this point, which meant we were susceptible to counterattacks. And Skehi, who tried to get ball, but it was a reckless challenge and a clear denial of a goal-scoring opportunity. So he'll be sent off with the red card. Obviously, it won't have the most impact on this fixture, but he will be missing out on the next match, which is less than ideal. Although that wasn't the result we were hoping for, we do still have some decisions to make in the final days of the January transfer window. First off, Jay Gregory will be switching to the target man development plan, as that is kind of the system we use for these Crystal Palace strikers. Blake Simmons, a 60 rated right back, will be seeing promotion to the first team. He's got great potential, and we'll be trying to loan him out for the remainder of the season, along with Ed Holden. The 57 rated center attacking mid has potential 88 to 94. Although we can't officially see his status until he's 60 rated or higher, we were fortunate enough to get a loan offer. So we'll check back in and see what his rating is at season's end. While promoting those academy prospects will help us check out the youth development objective, we do have a couple of players exiting in a few months' time. Jack Butlin will be joining Basak here at the beginning of season two. Nathaniel Klein to Freiburg in the Bundesliga. And finally, Mili Vojevic to Montpellier on a free transfer. The couple of days following the close of the transfer window was just enough time to subscribe to the channel if you're enjoying the series so far, especially with an upcoming Derby day against Brighton. No Gehi for this one, as he will be sitting out due to a red card suspension, but that will give us a chance to try out the 4-3-3 attacking formation. I'm happy to be showcasing this match in full and not just the playable highlights, because the last time we played Brighton, it was pretty un underwhelming, but I'll say right now, that is not going to be the case in this one. Awar getting play through, and that will be his first Premier League goal. Great occasion to do so, giving us the 1-0 advantage just before the halftime break, and I think that really showcases the potential promise this 4-3-3 attacking formation might give us. Awar has the freedom to get forward from the midfield, and clearly Vieira's tactics are working out in this one. As we get into the second half, again, we're dominating possession. It's Awar and Zaha that play a huge role in the build-up to this one. And Edouard now establishing his spot as the starting striker with Mateta's departure will double our lead. We weren't going to stop there, though. This is a really nice finish from Edouard, very similar to the chance he had against Arsenal. But this time, it's going to be on his preferred right foot and he is not going to miss out. This result clearly going in our favor, but very similar to previous matches, we seem to let up a little bit defensively, just making some costly errors, and Brighton, all of a sudden, are starting to find themselves back into this game. Only two goals behind with still over 30 minutes left to go, so we're going to make a more defensive-minded change. It's Eze being brought off for Schlupp. I figure Schlupp gives us kind of more of a defensive presence, which kind of is the role he's played in the past before Awar took over that starting spot. My opinion, that should have been a penalty, but not called for Zaha, and he's going to come right back and do what he does best. Just some great dribbling, sets himself up with the right angle on goal, and that gives us our fourth one. Trying to be pretty conservative with our build-up play and retain possession for these final 20 minutes, but when the opportunity arises, Ducare is not going to miss out. Our center defensive mid pushing up and showing that he can also score some goals when you give him the chance. Maybe we need to rethink our tactics because that's probably the best goal we've scored so far in this Crystal Palace series, and hopefully the first of many for Ducouré. But late in the game, it's Undav that will get a second. So clearly he's one of the standout players for Brighton, someone that we might need to watch out for. But still a spectacular 5-2 result. We'll take that every time. Everything seemed to be going well for us. A few consecutive wins, but that will suddenly come to a halt. A first half injury to Zaha is going to completely turn the tides here as he will be missing the remainder of the season. And now we'll need to start looking at other options. That's exactly why I chose to keep Jay Gregory in our youth academy. He has dropped from potentially be special to an exciting prospect, but that doesn't matter too much as dynamic potential can boost that right back up. And these FA Cup fixtures continue to give a great chance for some of our younger talents to shine. We're into the round of 16 against Fulham, and as I was doing an interactive match sim, things were still level after 90 minutes and extra time. So rather than letting Chance decide things on penalties, I thought I would jump in to one, test out some of these new set-piece mechanics, but also 
See if some of our new players can step up. Gregory will be in our penalty kick rotation, taking the third overall pen. But we were two for two so far. And of course, with Fulham missing their first penalty, we did have the advantage. Here is Gregory stepping up and tucking that one away into the bottom right-hand corner. Fulham's new signing, Honor Sullivan, unable to convert. And it is Will Hughes who can seal things for us right down the middle. I'm telling you, full power is the way to go on penalty kicks this year. They're satisfying to score, and what's even more satisfying is that we're through to the quarterfinals of the FA Cup. That match will be against Arsenal. Had we not played them earlier in the Premier League season, I think I would have showcased this one as well. But we do, unfortunately, fall out of the FA Cup in the quarterfinals. Still a really good run, and we will see how things are looking at the end of the Premier League season. Just one fixture remaining against Liverpool. Due to a short-term injury, Edouard will not be available. So we again, we'll see if Gregory, our homegrown talent, can rise to the occasion. Although this match won't have too much importance for us in the standings, we've solidified ourselves mid-table. It could certainly mean something for Liverpool. With Chelsea facing third place Spurs, it is definitely a possibility that they'll drop points. So Liverpool will be looking for all three in this one. For what it counts, I think how you end a season does indeed impact how you move forward into the following year. So we're trying to end off this first year campaign on a positive note. It's obviously going to be a tough test with Liverpool, and it only took them six minutes to score their first goal, and it's really one that I don't think we could have stopped. Just a good volleyed effort from Virgil and Haita in what might be his last game as a Crystal Palace player, unable to make the stop. But we're trying to respond, and it's Olise who has been one of our standout talents, just given the space down the right side, and he does well to finish that on Allison's near post. I'm not sure why it wasn't covered as well, but again, it's Olise. Dribbling towards the middle, finding Juan Basaka on the edge, and Awar almost find the back of the net on that header. It seems like we've had the majority of the highlights here, as now it's Mitchell who gets a chance, and it is Awar whose effort goes off of the post. All of a sudden, you've got to think Crystal Palace are the favorites in this one, as Edouard, he was recovering from his injury. I didn't want to give him the full 90 minutes, so for these last third of the match or so, we'll see if he can prove the difference, but Mo Salah... Just these high-rated Liverpool players, the ball seems to fall right back to them. I don't know how much of a rating makes a difference, but these top, top teams are just so tough to break down. I thought for a second we got the second in this one, and it was Edouard who was called off sides. We'll get one final opportunity with just minutes remaining. Edouard able to beat the Liverpool defenders for pace, but it's tipped away from Alisson on the corner kick to Corey, trying to score another long shot, but safely in the hands for Alisson. And unfortunately, our season will end in a loss. Although we fell short in this one, I am not disappointed at all with how we played. If we take the same mentality in season two, who knows what might happen. It's too bad the end game cutscenes didn't highlight it more, but Liverpool winning the Premier League title on the final match of the Premier League season. We will see a 12th place finish. Definitely some room for us to grow in season two of this career mode and the relegation spots going to Southampton, Bournemouth and Nottingham Forest. Recapping some of the other domestic competitions, West Ham with a win in the FA Cup against Arsenal. We saw a third round exit to West Ham in the Carabao Cup with Liverpool winning the final three to two against Leicester City. Manchester City with a win in the Champions League. It's Real Sociedad to get the Europa League title. And the Conference League title will go to Villarreal, a 2-1 win against Fiorentina. It's pretty surreal that despite the injury, Zaha was still the club's top goal scorer. 19 from 31 is not a bad figure at all. Had the 8th most goals in the Premier League. And assist-wise, had 12 from 31. That was enough to finish 2nd most assists. Which, if I'm not mistaken, that number didn't change at all since January. Check me in on Ed Holden. He's up to a 62 rating. Probably isn't ready for the first team yet, so I'm anticipating another loan spell next year. Jay Gregory, however, will be a rotational player. Some good growth this season, up to a 74 overall, but I think the best young prospect in this Crystal Palace team was Michael Olise. He went up plus 5 in his rating. He's now the second highest valued player in the squad, behind our winner signing, Awar. We've got one Final player developing in our youth academy, Jonathan Bond, a 57 rated striker with 82 to 94 potential. But an outlook on Patrick Vieira will pretty much check off all of our objectives for season one. I think we've got the right squad 
to build towards a good future at Palace. If we can solidify some things in our defense and make some good signings in the next episode, I think we can start making that push for European football. That's where I want you guys to come in and start leaving your transfer suggestions. I'm always looking for realism, so if you have any players with ties to Palace or maybe from some of the relegated clubs in the Premier League in mind, let me know in the comments section. As always, if you enjoyed the video, make sure you leave a like, subscribe if you're new, but until next time, this has been Flick. I'll be talking to you all again soon.